And welcome to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Steve Green. Hi, I'm Nikki Limo. And today, indeed, we are talking about relationship indeed. advice. Because that's our forte. Were you surprised? Exactly. Um, no one was. No. And also, nothing helps the show more than check us out. Patreon.com slash sticky, S-T-I-K-K-I. You get this podcast a day early. It supports the show. Also, you get access to our dope-ass Patreon um, Discord community. And get a free roll poker tournament every month. Every we give month. away cash prizes. And I do Crypto Corner every Tuesday night, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I actually did a, a stream of Pirate Game last night. A was, pirate game? Yeah, I was playing Pirate Game. Pirate Game? Yeah, it was fun. Neat. But, it, but then my computer melted down, so. Okay, maybe that's why it melted down. Yeah, that's why. So You didn't tell me that part. I left that part out, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was also dressed like a pirate. Okay. The less I know, the better... And I would like to give them a call one day. So if you guys can join the, Patri- the Patreon community, that would help me advice. get them a call. More mystery in a relationship is best. How sick would it be if I'm playing pirate game dressed as a pirate with a McCall not on my shoulder? Not sick at all. That's, people disagree. Not at all. People disagree. I'm not going to kink shame, but I am the one you married, so I think I'm allowed to... You don't think I can get him a call? Put input. I didn't say that. Well, thank you. That's, that gives me hope. <laughs> Not say that. That gives me hope. Okay, so what's uh, the relationship advice agenda today? Well, you have um, so if you if you are part of our Patreon community, yeah, uh, you are the first people whose questions we answer. Email podcast at nikki dot if you yes. would like to email us a question. Uh, let's get started. I don't know if they're relationship questions because I haven't read them ahead of time. They might not be. They are so. Uh, the first one is titled Junior Tweeter Follow-Up and more here for the vibe questions. Okay. Doesn't okay. sound like relationship to I'm, me. I'm optimistic. We'll see. Hello, Steve and Nikki. Wrong order right off the bat. Right Just uh, wanted to correct love you. It, love you. Rocky from Texas with a follow-up for my previous question. All right. We got a, a follow-up question. It's summer, and I know y'all are busy, so just in case, I hope y'all had a good Halloween, Happy Thanksgiving, That's and Merry amazing. Christmas. You can tell it's a long-time listener of the show. Yeah, yeah. Because we suck sure. at being on time. However, we, we're filming this in August, so... Pretty good. I don't know when it comes out, Mark... Mark yeah, decides. That's, a, that's on Mark. That's on Mark, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're filming this in August, so not too far behind. This was sent in July, so we're only like a month that's behind this pretty question. Good. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, as always, thank y'all for continuing the show despite y'all's ever-changing lives. Thank you for that, uh, for Bless listening. You. Okay, shortly after I wrote y'all in the beginning of the year, my son who made the general hospital updates indeed got burned out after three years and no longer makes daily updates. Oh my gosh, I remember this one. Yep. His little son that makes general hospital, like, TikToks yeah, or TikToks, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He still he does still watch the show with his mom, and they do a recap once or sometimes every other week. He still makes mi- uh, any videos he wants. Example: a goofy new food review or an action figure wrestling match with his toys. While he never made money, we did make some true friends that followed him and keep up with the few that became friends over the past four years. So it's all good. We never forced him to make a video when he didn't want to, and when he was ready to stop it, it was stopped right away. Now for some fun questions for y'all, Steve. A few episodes ago, you talked about the absolute worst writing on a show called Skins. My yes. question is. Is, what is an example of good writing or a show or movie that you thought, wow, this is the best thing I ever saw? Example, I know it's a lot of people's pick, but I feel like Breaking Bad is probably the best written show that Agreed. I have ever watched. Agreed. A lot of people have picked Game of Thrones, but I never watched it. He has multiple questions here. This first one's for you. Okay, yeah. I mean, for me, it's just like sometimes writing is so on the freaking nose. It's like we get it. This is really derivative and like you're just... It's better to to show, not tell. And I think Breaking Bad is a great example of constantly doing that. Yeah. While also having like great moments. But you know, also too, guys, like I'm I am not the demographic that that show Skins was targeting, right? So it's not like it's not like for me, right? Like so like I I'm just for me, it's not interesting. But I guess, you know, my ex girlfriend really liked the show and it it resonated with her in some way. But I didn't have that kind of like high school experience that I think whenever she did. I'm like, people don't talk like this. It's bad writing. That's me too. And whenever I'm like, this person is a one dimensional character. It's just an archetype. It's not like a deep, yes. like multi layered character. Then that's bad writing to me. I also think that like kids shouldn't sound like adults. And like in that show, every kid sounds like a fucking adult. I never watched it. Yeah, well, but to me. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I think that. But the acting, I think there, there's a couple actors in there that were really good. See, so that's a thing is that uh, acting is more important to me than writing because I feel like a good actor can 
make a character out of bad writing. Yeah. But I, uh, but some people are vice versa, where they can handle uh, bad acting but not bad writing. Yes. You know, and I, I happen to just. I also think the show Euphoria is an amazingly written show. Yeah, it is. I do think those teenagers don't act like how I acted in te- when no, I was but a teenager. It feels real. But maybe and it that's makes how me this generation not is. I want to have children. Yeah, because when I watch TikToks, <laughs> I'm like, damn, they do seem like the people in Euphoria. So, yeah. like, I don't know, maybe growing up on the internet. Um, like to me, that's a way advances. more real, fucked up high school show and not like oh, yeah. what and a maybe bunch not of writers kids think at all. kids are doing. Yeah. yeah. Drugs and sex. Breaking Bad, excellent show. One of my favorite movies ever is called Heat, which is a just greatly written movie um, by Michael Mann, who I got to meet a couple years ago. It was pretty cool. I loved Garden State. I don't know if I liked the writing or the acting better in that, but I liked it all. Yeah, Garden State was good. Yeah. All right, so there you go. Um, okay, the next question is for Nikki. When you were doing stand-up, did you not have to, uh, did you have to not watch other comedians' uh, show so that you wouldn't have their jokes in your mind when writing. Who are your, some of your favorite comedic inspirations, like who you watched growing up? I just showed my kids Jim Gaffigan. I like his cleaner style, and the Hot Pocket bit is so good. I also grew up with Bill Engvall and Jeff Foxworthy oh, nice. for the Blue Collar Tour. Yeah. I didn't enjoy Larry the Cable Guy or the other comedian on that tour. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Tater so, salad. Uh, no, I, I grew up watching stand-up, so I don't think i and i didn't stay away from watching it i feel like in a way you do have to like watch it to get a feel for the format the flow the timing of things like as you're like growing up like oh i really like this i want to do something like this um also the people i watched were predominantly male so i don't feel like i would steal like their jokes or ever be able to be able to sound like them yeah um and also my specific stand-up was all based on actual experiences that I had so there was no way for me to copy someone's joke because they were literally about my jobs as like a model modeling for cat food <laughs> didn't like being cast as a Latina even though I'm never I'm not a Latina and I I'm never been cast as a Filipino and uh, a lot of like just really personal stuff um, and observations that I feel like were deeply personal and I don't think anybody could copy me and I couldn't copy them from someone else. Um, yeah, when you're also, when you're up there too, like it's really just you and a mic versus the crowd. And yeah. sometimes you can peel into other people's bits because you got off trail on your own like track, you know? Yeah. So you like got off your own track and then you started, I'm talking from for myself. You, for you, yeah. And then I, I would notice, I'm like, wait a minute, this premise is not mine. Yeah. And then I would just like. So we have completely different ways of preparing for stand up because yeah. Steve is from an improv background yes. and I came from an acting background with like it's scripted you know and I enjoy improving in scripted uh, scenes but I w- didn't come from a purely improv background so when I uh, would put together my stand-up it was all written completely and then I rehearsed it out loud yeah and then put I- put in there organic things that make it sound more like a person talking that like kind of off the cuff, you know, mm-hmm. which is, again, I think that's how good writing should be is yeah. like not sounding like a script, but sounding like it just came to you in that moment. And then because of acting, um, it was just the way I memorized it was like as if I was just coming up with the thoughts on the fly. Yeah, but I can't do that. All of it was scripted. I sound like I'm reading off of a cue card. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I would have a little tag in there or two. Yeah. Or depending on like the audience, like maybe I'd have a callback to like if I pointed someone out in the earlier in the show, like I would do a callback that related to the joke to yeah. that person. Yeah. But it, it was very rare that I would just completely tangent off into something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, my favorite comedians growing up, I liked Nick Swartzen, I liked uh, Dave Chappelle, uh, Bill Burr. Mm, Jim Gaffigan was up there too That's during the list. early you 2000s. Know, I love Dana Carvey. Yeah, Dana Carvey's great. I didn't really get into his stand up that much. I, you, you I watched watch him the on Aspen, SNL. Live from Aspen one? Oh, he was no. so good. Yeah, he, was, he killed me back in the Great day. tipper. Have served him a few times. Yeah, he's Excellent him. tipper. That's awesome. I always remember that. Like he'd have like a fifty dollar bill and tip seventy dollars. That's sick. Like amazing tipper. So sick. Anyway, um, okay. 
Next question, Steve, how do you feel about the whole Daniel Craig James Bond run now that it's over? I thought Casino Royale was the best Bond movie, and that was tough for me growing up with Sean Connery before that GoldenEye was my favorite. I think I still think the fight at the end on the big satellite dish holds up as one of the best Bond fights. I wish I had never watched No Time to Die. Curious about your thoughts on Dude, that Dude, you, I mean, you could be my best friend. Right? I mean, this guy is so on far, the So far, no relationship questions. Green. I, uh, you're right. <laughs> uh, uh, man, what do I think about the Daniel Craig run? I mean, look. I think Casino Royale was by far the best one, and I know everyone likes Skyfall too, and I like Skyfall, but Casino Royale is just so good, and Martin Campbell is the guy who also directed GoldenEye, and he directed Casino Royale. He directed two of the best Bond movies ever. Mm. I'm with you, though. I think GoldenEye is my favorite Bond movie, um, but yeah, Casino Royale is top, top, top three, I think, for me, but Craig was so good. And I really liked it, but I miss the humor of Bond. And like, I think that Pierce Brosnan just nailed it in GoldenEye. Like, he just was James Bond, like, for my formative years. Yeah. And obviously, Connery is the archetype, right? For everyone's like, he's the god of Bond. And I think that that, um, I can understand why when I watch like Goldfinger, which is a great movie on its own, just not even as a Bond movie. Yeah. But for me, when I think about James Bond, I think about Pierce Brosnan and Goldeneye. Me too, because I was introduced to uh, James Bond during that time and with the N64 it was game. The game, dude, yeah. Yeah, the N64 we were just game. Playing the damn so game last in night. my head, that was always James Bond. And when I, I was introduced to Sean Connery years prior, uh, watching Indiana Jones. So he was an old guy in my head yeah. as, ja- as uh, Indiana, he was old guy Indiana too. Jones's father yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, like. Yeah, never, never knew he was a Bond until until Goldeneye came out, and then my mom was like, you know, Sean Connery is the original James Bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds like your mom. She loved James. She loves Sean Connery. (laughs) Yeah, and then Daniel Craig just, I don't know, he's great. Um, nothing against him, but he just seems too old because I just have a different version of. He was great. He was really great, but I just I like Bond with a sense of humor, and yeah, dude, Die Another Day got campy as fuck, and some of those Brosnan movies were not great, but. I, I like him as the role the most. Okay. And then uh, he says, Nikki, now that you play poker, has Steve made you watch Casino Royale again? If so, how realistic do you find the poker game they have? I like that they didn't end it on the royal flush like most movies do. Uh, <laughs> like the movie Maver- Maverick with Mel Gibson, although that was a five card draw, not hold them. I uh, have not. I haven't seen Ro- Casino Royale recently. Have you seen it at all? I don't know. You know what's a fun thing to do is to pretend that the movie The Rock starring Sean Connery is a James Bond movie because like basically they get him from a prison because yeah. he was captured in like the 60s which is when James Bond was like he was James Bond uh-huh. and then like they have him help infiltrate Alcatraz because he's like the only guy who ever escaped from there and it kind of lines up I've watched a YouTube video about it. this guy did a really good job of like lining up why this guy is actually James Bond and huh. I thought it was sick as fuck the rock yeah why um John Patrick Mason, who's Sean Connery in The Rock, yeah. is actually just a fake name that he was using because he was undercover, and, and he was James Bond. Oh, that's funny. And that's sick. I like that. Because he's like, he's, he says all this stuff, he's like, um, your majesty's SAS, and all that stuff, so it's like, well, <laughs> shit, he's, I mean, he's he could James be James Bond, Bond. yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty There's sick. some theories about, like, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, you know, didn't really die in Titanic, he became Wolf of Wall Street or something like that. Like, pretty funny. I forget the the lore, like there was some fanfic about and I was like, ah, oh, it kind of does link up the way that they put it all together with like through the different movies. That's funny. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Steve, another writing question since I'm a creative mind, I'm just curious about others' process. Now that you do crypto mostly, do you still like writing or, and how do you make time to write or do you only write when you get back to film or create in LA? I enjoy writing and creating as a hobby, but people definitely don't realize how hard it is as a profession. Maybe after the writer's strike last year, it helped people realize how important good writing is. It is something. So I have something that I'm working on that I don't really want to get into, but it is extremely difficult to focus on it when I am so focused on crypto. That's a fact. Yeah. But yeah, there's something that I have swirling in my brain at all times that, um, yeah, that I need to get out of me. And, um, you know, that process, like you said, is really hard, but the, the key to it is if you really like your story, then you can't wait to tell it. Yeah. And that's, I think the kind of the dance. It also really helped me too having a writing partner, like writing, Having a writing Absolutely. partner is like the best, man. Like, because me and Mike used to just like, even when COVID happened, we would get on Zooms and shit like that. And 
we'd be writing remotely for hours and hours and hours, just like using a shared screen because we always did that anyway. But there's nothing to me better than having a creative partner who you are like. It's like you guys can finish each other's sentences, and it was like that for me and Mike Gallagher. So. Yeah, and then he says, Nikki, same question, but geared towards comedy, I guess. Uh, do you still write jokes? Um, so I feel the same way as Steve. Uh, when I went into poker, though, I just I started doing poker content last year in 2023 and teamed up with a girl who also had a comedy background. And so we have been writing poker sketches. I haven't gotten to like share a lot of any of that with my vlog channel or anywhere re like anywhere recently. There's been a whole world that's happened in my life since I've gotten to post on my vlog channel and update. But yeah, I've gotten to do like several different um, written sketches like we used to do in the old YouTube days. And then I actually got to perform for the first time in four years on the WPT, the World Poker Tour cruise uh, just for funsies. And you did great. Yeah, it was it was fun. I mean, I I don't think I did as good as I have done in the past, but it was a nice little like toes, well, you're never gonna toes in the water so, yeah. again. Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I don't, m so, same with Steve, with being so deeply ingrained in crypto, I don't miss it like the way where like, where it's my only passion. Yeah. You know? Well also after COVID hit too, people, I mean the whole movie business kind of changed like really quickly. Like basically like a lot of the independence and stuff like that that we were doing the money for that stuff just dried up yeah. and now it's all like hey unless you have a franchise exactly it's really tough to get your shit off the ground i know so. i was just talking about that how like we had so many good comedy blockbusters back in like 2007 8 mm -hmm. the early like 2011 12 like this like middle 2000 10s period yeah, the Judd like, Apatow yeah, stuff yeah the Judd Apatow yeah. stuff like you would get like at least one or two blockbuster comedy blockbusters yeah, yeah. a year and now I'm like where did those go and yeah it's because of the money it's because yeah. like people well, don't want to take like a chance that on. movie Red Notice right on on uh, Am uh, not on Netflix that's like starring A-listers so it's like Kevin Hart and Ryan Reynolds or whatever. Yeah. It's like there's no like wiggle room for like. For like new, new talent. Ta nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's really tough. Like you're not going to find another Emma Stone or Jonah Jonah Hill or not whatever. Not in this environment. I, obviously things will things will eventually shift. But right. As like the economy improves, improves I guess. I would, um, uh, I would hope. But it just it does seem to revolve around money and studios not wanting to take a chance on like. Yeah. I mean ultimately nobody wants to get fired. So you, you right. have to stick to a franchise that you can put your name on and say oh yeah this will do the well death of creativity it's pretty it's pretty brutal out there and uh rocky says okay i could rattle on forever because i always enjoy y'all's answers i'm sure i will write again in the future please don't stop the podcast rocky from texas thank, thank you, you so rocky. much rocky for writing we appreciate you thanks for watching and uh not a single relationship question there steve i'm cooked seems like our audience may not be as predictable as you think. i'm in trouble mm -hmm. we'll see we'll see though. Mm -hmm. i'm optimistic okay Next question is uh, titled, In Defense of Long Distance Relationships. Well, this one seems Here we go. promising for your department. Hey guys, first things first, I think I can speak for many people when I say your relationship is so inspiring. Thank you for being so genuine and entertaining. I've been listening to the show for years and it's always brought a smile to my face. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Seriously. Glad you Thank enjoy you. listening. I appreciate that. I was just listening to one of your recent episodes and felt compelled to comment. This isn't a question, just sharing my personal experience on the topic. Oh, okay. Nice. The person in the Ask, Ask Us Anything was talking about their long distance relationship and you guys were saying how you don't really believe long distance relationships can work. We do have a few exceptions and caveats we that, always we, have exceptions. that we have said, but like overall, we don't think we could do it. No. Also, too, uh, I mean, like people, you know, there's general rules to things, right? Yeah. Like, don't rush into a relationship is what everyone says. Right, and we did. And we did. So, so we, it's bro like, we broke that but rule. generally, that's pretty good advice, I think, for everyone. Yeah. But then is it absolute advice? No. Never. Okay, so this writer says, well, I'm here to advocate otherwise. I've had two serious long-term relationships that started out fully long distance. All right, so some inspiration for any of you entering a long-distance oh, relationship. Although the first one didn't work out in the end, as many ha. relationships don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We win. <laughs> I'm now confident I have found my forever person. Oh, my God, congratulations. Sick. 
My partner and I met while he was visiting my country for the weekend, and we were fully locked in and committed from that first date, even though he was living halfway across the world. After a year of very long distance, he made the move so we could be together, and fast forward two more years, we recently bought a house and are very happily together still. A proposal might be in the works, eyeballs. Sick. <laughs> Um, although starting out long distance was a huge learning curve as we indeed as we needed to get to know each other remotely it also required a certain amount of commitment communication and understanding that only reinforced our bond and how much we wanted to be together against all odds that chemistry was undeniable and stronger than the distance was just trying to give people out there hope and tell them that it's okay to take that leap of faith if you feel like you found the right person again love love you both keep being you love anonymous I love that so happy for you and also we love hearing um success stories like that um because just because we haven't experienced it or it wouldn't float our boat uh doesn't mean it doesn't exist out there yeah also you guys just liked each other so much you were gonna make it work no matter what right and that that's love ins- prevails that's inspiring yeah exactly that's why you know we took a chance on rushing into things because we were like dang i think this is the one exactly like, i just think that's the one and i can't really give you concrete evidence other than maybe i'm a fool well, that's why that's that's our, but our fools song. rush in. That's why that's our yeah. song. Hundred percent. We're not wise men. No, <laughs> no, we are not. I've never been accused of being one. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I've been accused of being a wise guy. Yeah, a wise cracker. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna go on a little break, but when we come yeah. back, we do have one more question. And then I have a relationship question that I it's been burning in my For brain. For me? No, 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 no. About us? No, 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 no. Ah. No. Uh. All right. <laughs> BRB. Hey, we're on a break right now, and uh, I guess we're supposed to promo our show. Yeah, so we're going to talk about our we're show. We're going to talk about a show that you took a break from to like right. talk about how you should listen to our show. Technically, we're not on break. We're still working. It's culture they don't tell you, and it's all the shit that we wish people would have told us that we had to mess up on and figure out ourselves. Now we're telling you about it. That's it. And sometimes we answer questions that you send in, and sometimes we judge other people's situations so keep listening and uh check us out on patreon patreon.com slash sticky thank you and shout out to brian jorgensen and we're back hope you found yourself a, a good snack a little maybe you took a little uh a little bathroom break or maybe I don't know. you made a four course meal or maybe you're still commuting to work and we wish you the best yeah. on your journey um we do have another question here and you could submit your questions to podcast at nikki.limo if you'd like a chance for us to read it on the show i can't promise anything if you write something really weird i'm gonna have mark edit it out but i don't read them ahead of time so you know uh it is what it is you know shoot your shot uh podcast at nikki.limo we're here we might not get around to them till christmas i don't know sometimes we do that but we will get around to them eventually uh this one's titled pick me please all right we are we are picking you am i settling Okay. I like that. I like that. Hello, Nikki and Steve. Correct order. Thank you. <laughs> First off, I just want to say that I absolutely love the two of you. I've been listening to the podcast since the beginning, and now it's finally time for me to submit my own relationship question. All right, Ha-ha. let's go. Please give a fun nickname. Sorry if this is a long email. Fun nickname. Do it. Long John. Long John. You like that? Is it? A, is it a chick? I think it. I don't know. It's All actually. Right. I don't. I don't. Long John. Uh, well, it starts off my boyfriend. So, uh, it, we don't know. Okay. Long John it is. Long John it is. Long John Silver. Oh. Silver? Does that... that? I didn't think it was going to go there. I like it. <laughs> well, it went there. I like it. So my boyfriend and I have been together for around three years. He's 34 and I'm 29. I absolutely love him and we have so much fun together. We both like a lot of the same things. I love everyone in his family and we get along so well. We have a very good friend group as well. Now to the quote unquote problem. I feel like I'm settling. Ooh. He's not very ambitious. It's hard to talk to him about deeper things or to reflect about things. He's also a very anxious person that stresses over a lot of small things, which can be a bit exhausting. He cares too much about what other people think about him. For example, we were out with another couple and they were bickering a little. He then said that us girls should stop being mad or something. And then I reacted and said, asked why he brought me into this when she's the one that upset, that's upset. And he said that he didn't want her to feel attacked, but he was fine attacking me. He, he's also lied to me. To me, lying is one of the worst things you can do, and I've told him in the past that I hate liars when people lie. That's facts. One of the recent lies was regarding weed. I don't like it when he smokes at home or in front of me, but I told him that he can do it when uh, when he's with friends, etc. One day he lied to me. 
to me to try to smoke at home, but I checked him. I told him that I'm angry he lied. And it's not about the weed, but he just didn't get it, like, at all. Like, he would just keep talking about the weed. Like, shut the fuck up. It's not what we're talking about. But what? But that is what's so hard, to talk about things and feel understood. I also feel like he often just doesn't listen to what I say, and I've told him in the past that I feel like I'm talking to a wall. I think he isn't interested in, in bettering himself and that he doesn't like any criticism. I could be saying something very harmless, like, uh, if you hold down on your screen, you can select all the photos, but he gets triggered and says he, that he likes selecting each one. I confronted the situation because let's be real here. Why would anyone want to select individual photos? He said that he did it just because that's, he d- didn't want to do it my way. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> I get this. I get that. I get, I get that. This is the version of Steve I get when he's drunk. <laughs> now one more thing sorry about the rambling he's very negative which is so so exhausting to me he says that i'm naive and i don't think about things but i've told him that i've thought about every possible scenario and most of the time it's not the end of the world i can deal with problems when they happen no matter what when you ask him he will usually have a negative attitude slash answer let's say we're going to the store to get something on the way he could say that we probably won't get parking on the spot he likes and he bets that they don't have the item in the store or maybe there'll be so many people in there or complain about spending money i thought about the quote unquote airport scenario where you imagine being with your significant significant other and having a crying baby in your arms all the flights get canceled and you look at him um, and say fix it I'd say fix it I can't do that all the flights get canceled and you look at him like basically like a really bad scenario can he handle himself and she's like I don't think he can't ah even though I've probably said many many reasons as to why I shouldn't be with him I love him so much sometimes when I look at him I can't understand why I would ever be angry at him and he makes me laugh so hard this is the best relationship I've had yes I had very very toxic relationships but it doesn't feel like it's enough to settle for have you guys ever been in a relationship that didn't feel 100% right please help yes Yeah. what what do you think well I think go with your gut yeah because only because what is the end goal for this? Is it marriage? Is it to be with this partner forever? Or is it just a temporary thing? Because if it's forever and it's you're going to sign a legal contract that is very hard to get out of and like, you know, it's very expensive. And, you know, if you <laughs> you're, you're definitely signing for forever uh, it, with with caveats of expenses. Um, you're also going to get to per- know the person way more. Right. So just know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I I just don't. There's certain things no one's perfect but there are certain things that you should not have to settle for and especially if they're going to get so annoying to you and grading over time that you're not you're going to resent this person as a person yep to me i can't stand being like misunderstood over like really simple things like that whole weed situation i i don't incompetence is so unattractive to me Mm -hmm. um and not just like not just incompetence, but that he that he doesn't want to try to understand yeah. either. Yeah. You know? That's bad. Like the selecting the photos things, that's stubbornness. We're both pretty stubborn. Hell yeah. And I can Nikki tried to teach me how to do a dish one time and I was pissed as oh, fuck. Oh, we got in it. such a huge fight. I was pissed. Our first year sounds a lot like these arguments. Yeah, it does. To be honest. It's nitpicky bullshit. You you've been with this person for three years though. Right. By three years. I don't think I'd be in there anymore. Right. It, what it sounds like to me is that you guys have a, a good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Like you, he makes you laugh. You like, you feel all the feelings. The feelings are the chemistry part. You you need chemistry and compatibility in a relationship for, I think, for both people to be happy, you know? Yes. Uh, otherwise, you are settling on one of the two. And I think that when I've heard people talk about marriage in a way that's like, Oh, you know, the love is just a chemical that goes away or whatever. I think they are talking about like that initial chemistry, yeah, yeah, an infatuation and stuff. And in that case, yeah, and they made it work as like a business basically yeah. where they like uh created a family and had to operate as a team and stuff. And they think that that holding it together is like, you know, it's a, it's a business, right? Yeah. And love love is temporary. But I don't think that's true. I think that if you find that combination of chemistry and compatibility then you guys have the potential to be happy for a long time but if that's not there and there's something in your gut that like that screaming baby at the airport scenario whatever it is that makes you feel like this guy might not be the one for me yeah i think you're right and maybe just enjoy it for what it is in the moment maybe like you're supposed to learn something from this person maybe you're supposed to get like this experience um but yeah, I've been in relationships. I've talked about this before. I was in a, a five-year relationship with a guy that 
we had the opposite. I, I felt like we were very compatible, but I had no chemistry with him. So like he on paper was great to me. Like what, like we didn't fight. Um, he was very understanding. He was compassionate. He tried to be there for me. Uh, he was like supportive, but I just couldn't feel yeah. the any oomph, chemistry. The oomph the oomph. And, and he would get very sad because I never wanted to get intimate with him and and I don't blame him for getting sad. That's something that's important. But I used to think because I was very young at the time that I used to think that that was like, well, you know, like uh, that initial attraction fades with yeah. every relationship. Every so I should I just I should just settle for this guy because like I'm not going to find another guy that understands me like this, that is supportive like this, that that uh, lets me be me and and totally like gets me or tries to understand me you know i'm not going to find another person like that so i might as well if every relationship the sex is going to die i might as well marry this guy yeah and i'm so glad i didn't and not no offense to him he's a great guy and uh, he's married and Here he's like go. he's very I gotta hear he's about very this. like in love i'm sure but I, i'm so glad i didn't settle there and also didn't settle for the next one where i had pure chemistry and no compatibility yeah um because because look the the golden boys out there, there is, the, the golden goose there i found is, him dude. but i don't think that i would have known to appreciate that if i hadn't been through those experiences which is why i'm saying maybe just take this experience for what it is and and like learn from it and stuff because now you're learning what you don't want to settle for but also we preserved our chemistry yeah right? which is very important yeah like, that's true like you you can just have it and like just let it go by, in my opinion, doing all the dumb shit everyone does, where they stop dating each other and then just like and get farty. I'm and farting stuff. around you. I'm f I'm I'm farting in, in, under the sheet and pulling your head under and shit like that, and just being a roommate with your partner. And then what do you know? The chemistry just erodes away. So we we make sure that those two things are you know pristine. We've also done a good job at like nipping resentment in the butt yeah we have no like, resentment i i think every time i've started to feel it i brought it up immediately with steve like yeah. in the beginning even when we were fighting all the time and and kudos to steve like for wanting to like prevent that from happening yeah. instead of like we're both very stubborn people yeah both of us could have just been like fuck you then like i'm doing my thing yeah, i'm exactly. me and i can't change me or whatever well, some things are just too important and you have to hyper react to it basically and just fix it yeah so yeah but like even you know recently um we uh, we always share like so that's not like we're always perfect all the time like but we recently we went on a date and i got upset because steve was on his phone during part of it yeah, and true. um I told him that if it was a first date, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone on a second date because I was, I felt, um, not important yeah. because of him checking his phone constantly for like his fantasy football team, which not isn't. I was our in fantasy. a fucking. It was. It's the worst thing ever. He's in a, fan, I, I'm in a fantasy. Another different football. fantasy league. No, it's so annoying, dude. I was in. I'm in a draft that like lasted a whole fucking month. Yeah, it's just insane. so I'm not even part of this this league, and I don't know any of these people. And we're on a like really fancy date that was like not a usual date. It was sick. And he's just like on his phone. I wasn't on my it. phone the whole time, but not the whole time, but At still all. enough for me to be. But yeah, I had to make so a couple annoyed picks, which is and crazy. like uh, and like un it was so unattractive to me. Yeah. And uh, and like I told him that and like I didn't want to tell him that because it does seem trivial like okay like he was only on his phone like for not all the whole time and like he did like have moments where we connected and stuff but like so it's trivial right and we're married and like we're like neither of us are leaving like so whatever who cares <laughs> right like he could have just been like whatever this bitch is crazy and who cares like yeah. she'll get over it yeah. and maybe I would or whatever but that resentment would kind of build up yeah. and especially if he did it again like it would just kind of start to build up um, and like the very next day phone was put away like looked at me the whole time we had great conversation we I like I need that and so yeah. I told him what my needs were he honored that and corrected like what made me feel like that wasn't getting met and we had a great time and like and I boosted up the date night because I was like we're gonna have a date like and quickly. it's super attractive to yeah, me quickly. honestly like it is it we had great intimate times after yes we did but like I didn't want to have sex with that first guy <laughs> <laughs> that's how nikki gets yeah so yeah if you can't you can't uh 
Well, no, I, but I love the communication. We, we, yeah, we, that's same. what I love about I think that's our, our so relationship key. so much. So if you communicate to him, but like, let's say, because her guy yeah, just let's doesn't, say he doesn't, doesn't implement get it. it. Yeah. He not only doesn't implement, yeah. he doesn't even get what the issue is. That's a problem. That's like a problem. that, that did happen a few times, but we got there like, uh, like with, we had pan issue, like <laughs> where Steve ruined so many of my pans and he was just like, it's just a $10 pan, but it was the principle yeah, yeah, that yeah. it was my pan and that I didn't want to keep replacing my pans. <laughs> and like, he wouldn't let me tell him how to use a pan because like, you're not supposed to use knives on like nonstick pans but he kept using knives on nonstick pans and ruining all the pans and then being like well it's just a ten dollar pan but they were my pans anyway eventually <laughs> this freaking guy eventually came around and realized that it was just hurting me on principle yeah and it wasn't about a ten dollar the monetary value of the pan it was yeah. just about that i felt like he was disrespecting my things and not like honoring that like that i i didn't like that <laughs> yeah and i just didn't get it yeah, it, it took me a minute to put it together, and yeah. like and instead of like, cause cause as men, and I am speaking for all men here, we don't really see the depth of things very immediately, right? We just go, well, it's about a pan, right? So it's not like a reflection of like your inconvenience because you like this pan. We're just like it's a pan, right? So that's all it is. So now I understand that those two things are linked together, and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and because of that lesson. I'm very good at, at passing on what I have learned to other men. Yes. I was I've been able to tell other dudes that and like they go, Holy shit. I oh, think everyone okay. just needs that light bulb moment because yeah. like this is a, a definitely a uh relatable factor yes. in a relationship. Like I've seen articles written about like, Am I wrong for leaving him over a cup in the sink? Right. And it wasn't about the cup in the sink. Yeah, 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 it yeah. was about the years of cups in the sink where it yeah. was like just this one thing would help me de-stress or yeah. whatever it is like would help me emotionally and it's all connected and like the one partner didn't get it and yeah. and, and or was just wasn't willing to change even and, recently like nikki was just out of town for like two days or whatever and i guess there was laundry on the couch that was not folded and i'm look again I'm speaking for all fucking men here dude <laughs> except for some of i know some guys are anal out there or whatever but dude i i didn't like nikki comes home and she's like Oh, so you just didn't want to fold these? And I was like, holy fucking shit. I didn't even notice them this whole time. I walked it's by like a that, pile of laundry. I walked by this couch so many times so and I never even I've, noticed one time. I that, had to get out <laughs> of town and I only had a, a finite amount of time. I did five loads of laundry and folded four of the five loads. Yeah, yeah. The last load, I did not have enough time to fold. So I was like... Steve can take care of it. It's mostly his clothes anyway. Yeah. It was like white shirts and like uh, like sheets, bed sheets and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I was like, Steve can take care of this last load. And then I come back three days later and it's still there. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. So just no, it just is on me or like it just doesn't get folded. Right. And and she said that. And I, I had a moment with myself where I was like, I didn't even notice that they were there this whole time. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But that is, you but know. that is you. That I, is me. I believe you because of the way the house looks a lot of the times. Thank you. And like that I'll, I'll declutter one counter <laughs> and then he'll immediately reclutter it because he just. Listen. Doesn't. Clutter princess. Yeah. I, I I'm, can I'm bad tell at clutter. where you were in the whole house because of your clutter. 100%. Right. And that's, but also I make efforts <laughs> to declutter it. I don't see you doing that. That's fair. Like we both are bad with clutter, yeah, but when I'm like trying to actively change this habit and then you are like re-enabling that habit, it's like, I'm never going to win this war. So but, then I want to give up. But you have to admit, I've been on it. Yeah. After I made the laundry comment, yeah. you have been on it. <laughs> I've been all over it. Yeah. And that's well, And I've been all over it with other yeah. things too. But, yeah. but it's attractive to me. Yeah. With, like, cause it makes me feel heard. Uh, heard. Yeah. And, and like going to love languages, um, you know, a lot of the like, you know, qual acts of service mm -hmm. or quality time or whatever, like both of those things are like the phone was the quality time thing. Yep. And like uh, acts of service is like the, you know, clutter around the house that I just can't get to because I just don't have physical time right. available. So, yeah, it's it, it makes me feel loved. And I think that. Ultimately, if both partners want to make the other one feel loved, they will put forth the effort. Yes. And if they don't, then yeah, you're settling. Yep, I like that. Yeah.
I like that. But All only right. hey, I like Nikki's advice. Trust your gut on this one because yeah. it's so hard for us to analyze this and go, oh yeah, you're for sure settling, girl. And, it, and if you wait like a few years, you're like sunken time fallacy sink, sinks in. Yeah, you're like don't now do I've been with this guy for five years because that's what happened to me. Where like where I was like, I was I've been with this guy for five years yeah. and like, am I really gonna find someone better? I mean, I hear horror stories about dating. Oh, so yeah. like, am I really gonna find someone better? I was 23 at the time too, and I'm like, I'm never gonna find yeah, someone better. Of course, better. yeah, it's the best, <laughs> I know. Such a dramatic age. So dramatic, but I was, you know, you're with someone for five years, you start feeling like, you know, I've been with, uh, Well, and you know their so family, much time. Yeah. it's like a whole thing. It is, that that is the hard part. Yeah, that's the hard part. When you get accepted by their family and you've known them and you're like it's treated rough. like family. It's rough. Yeah. Losing that is rough. Yeah, that's, that's, I can't imagine. No. Um. But yeah, I know you had another relationship question, but did you want to save it for the next yeah, episode? Yeah, I'm just going to save it for the next one. All right, well, not, that's a cliffhanger. <laughs> it's a total cliffhanger, <laughs> but it's a, good, it's a good one. It's so, I've it's been so thinking good. about it for like a day because yeah? it's so interesting. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's All just right. so like, wow, this is a crazy situation. Okay, I like yeah, that. So now I'm on the cliffhanger. There you go. All right, Coming we'll see up. you on the next one. Thanks for writing. If you have a question, you can ask us anything. Podcast at Nikki.Limo. Podcast at N-I-K-K-I dot L-I-M-O. Franklin, our director, is yeah, telling us, he's telling us uh, so we, we got to wrap, wrap it up. So uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye.